I'm going to give you five great tips on how to make great videos from home by just using the free natural light of the sun. And you get to save lots of time and money because you won't have to buy all that lighting kit stuff and spend the time to mess with it. Let's dive in now. Hey, I'm Gord. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn all about how to make awesome videos and other cool skills on how to succeed with video marketing and YouTube, then click on the subscribe button. A common challenge with people getting set up at home to shoot video for YouTube is whether or not they need to rush out and buy a DSLR camera and spend additional money on lights or a lighting kit to make a fancy studio setup. Well, let me tell you, you don't have to do any of that to get going. You can get started with just the video camera already in your smartphone and take advantage of the natural light that's out there and it's free to use. As we get going here, if you have a cool setup at home for shooting that works great and you have some additional tips to share with everyone, please leave them in the comments below. You will also see a link to my free ebook, Better Videos From Home, that is loaded with a ton more tips for you. Now please realize the tips we're going to go through totally apply to compact and DSLR cameras, not just smartphones. So let's get going. Tip number one, know the environment and how to work with it. It's imperative that you do your research before you start video shooting indoors. How do you know how much light is coming through and what variables affect that light? Many times, the direction of the house, the position of the windows, along with the time of year, all play an important part in the amount of light coming through. Is your house north-south facing or east-west? What are the sunrise and sunset times? Or where are you going to be uh, doing the shoot in the house? Does the room have a sunroof that, that allows additional light in? Light also changes depending on the time of day. As light changes, so does the color of the light. Be sure to choose a set location for shooting video where there will be adequate sunlight shining through the windows. If you aren't going to have adequate sunlight shining through the windows during the times of day that you're planning to shoot, then the location choice may not be a good one for you. If the location is the overriding factor and you can't accommodate the time of day for good natural light, then you may have to purchase additional lights so that you can light up that location whenever you desire. You may also choose to add a complementary light for the fill light or backlighting. You know, of course, adding in the lights, as I said before, is all about a budget decision. Tip number two, properly position the subject in relation to the window light. There are three options. Option number one, front lit by the window. Here the subject is directly facing the window and you, the person doing the shooting, are in between the window and the subject. This results in a more flatly, evenly lit subject because all the light is pouring onto them from behind you, who the person doing the shoot. There's no shadows or contrast. Option number two, side lit with the window. Here the subject would be parallel to the window or, or at a slight angle to the window. Depending on the time of day and the amount of light, this may yield um, a, a visual that will have more contrast, for example, more light and shadows, especially with the midday sun streaming through the window. Playing with filling the shadows on the opposite side of the face will require possibly the use of a reflector to bounce the natural light back onto the subject to balance things a little better. Option number three, backlit by the window. Here, the subject is sitting with their back to the window facing the person doing the shooting. You will need to possibly meter the subject and blow out the highlights to properly expose the image for the person. So this means that you will set the exposure based on the person, but if you do that, that's going to artificially inflate how bright the light is behind. So in order to, you know, get rid of the silhouetted look of the person, you'll end up blowing out the highlights. Alternatively, 
you could um, use a reflector as well to help bring back some of that light to light up the, the, uh, the subject. Tip number three, know when to shoot to get the results you desire. The timing for shooting is dependent on what the quality of lighting is from the windows where you're going to do the shoot. For example, you don't want to shoot when the angle of the sun is direct, like if you're dealing with a side window situation and it's blasting through and creates a very highlighted and contrasted look where there's bright spots and clipping out alongside dark contrasting shadows. An optimal time of day is when there are overcast skies that are nicely lighted such that it creates a nice soft broad directional light coming through the window with little or no contrasting effects creating unwanted shadows. Blue skies will also give consistent lighting, but you might have, you know, some color issues to deal with in, in, in post-processing if you choose to. Obviously, a mix of sun and cloud would wreak havoc on a video as the lighting will totally change as the clouds pass uh, by the sun, etc. So, you know, you want to get consistent lighting. The best soft directional light comes from the north and then it's available all day long. This has to do with the arc of the sun. A west-facing uh, window is best in the a.m., and an east-facing window is great in the afternoon. And a south-facing window is not that great because the sunshine, based on the arc of the sun, will override you know, the quality of the, of the window light because direct sunlight mostly is coming from the south based on the arc of the sun. Tip number four, use a deflector or a diffuser to help adjust the lighting effect. A diffuser softens the window light and broadens it out, just like a white curtain or blinds. It's particularly useful for windows that have harsh midday sun streaming through and you want to cut down on the intensity of the light. A reflector is often used in conjunction with window light and can add just the right amount of light to bounce back to dramatically improve the indoor video shoot. When the lighting on the subject is direct or head on, then the lighting is basically flat. However, if the lighting is more from the side and that is your intention, you will have shadows and more contrast to play with. The more the face is turned away, the greater the darkness and the contrast on the side of the face that is the farthest from the window light source. A lighting reflector can be used to balance the contrast. Place the reflector to act as a fill light whereby it'll bounce that, that natural light that comes through the window and goes past back onto the subject. Tip number five, tune your camera setup. If you're using a smartphone, you can pretty much let things go in auto mode. That said, some smartphones enable you to make adjustments similar to a DSLR. If so, experiment with those features. The challenge for most smartphones is low light because they have a smaller sensor than DSLR cameras. And if we're working with natural light and we don't have a great lighting situation, we may have some challenges. To get good exposure, you need to manage the relationship between ISO, f-stop, and the shutter speed. This plays an important role in indoor video shooting. With the DSLR and even in the smartphones, you're aiming to shoot with a shutter speed of 1 50th or 1 60th a second based on the general rule of doubling the frames per second rate of either 24 or 30. So the shutter speed is pretty well set. Now, if you choose a wide aperture and you have the ability to adjust that, you will provide a shallow depth of field and you can create a nice bokeh or blur effect behind uh, in creating that in the background, which was great if, you know, the location you've set has, you know, a little bit of clutter or noise that you want to mute out so that you can like focus on the subject. Next, choosing a larger or higher ISO provides more light. So again, if you're in a situation where there isn't uh, good quality natural light, uh, you can get a little bit of boost in the light by adjusting the ISO.
Wow, that was a nice list of tips. If you want more cool tips on creating better videos from home, click on the link for my free ebook. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button on the page so that you can get more videos like this in the future. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.